Good evening to everyone. Welcome to the second St. John telecast where I, Pastor Stephen Chipman, I wanted to come in and be with you briefly this evening. I pray that you all can hear me uh, fine. It's been a while since I came on and did a live stream uh, from my home office, but uh, tonight the Lord impressed on me to come on just for <clears throat> a moment and just to see if I could uh, just uh, talk to somebody tonight who may be going through a little distress and a little trouble. Uh, again, I am Pastor Stephen Chipman, pastor of the Second St. John Church, 305 Ingram Boulevard in the city of West Memphis, Arkansas, 72301. Uh, we have church every Sunday morning. We start at 9.15 a.m. with our Sunday morning adult Bible study and youth Bible study uh, where men and women can study the Bible, men with just men, women with just women, and youth can study together with their peers. And we invite you to come 9.15 a.m. every Sunday morning. But also at 10.15 a.m. we go into our worship service. That's where we worship God in spirit and in truth. And I would like to invite you to be our special guest, 1015 a.m. every Sunday morning. Uh, that's right. Come on in and be with us. We go into our devotional period, then uh, uh, praise and worship, and then right into the word of God. Amen. You can come and be a part of our special service. Our uh, directive, our our uh uh, motto for this year has been we are family and we are building the family of God right there at Second St. John Church where we fellowship come in Kananiya one with another and I invite you to come we have a motto just do it how God's way but we're emphasizing we are family and today we want to come to you briefly with a brief lesson today and our brief subject and lesson today is going to be return to God return to God and we're going to be looking at a book in the Old Testament by the name of Jeremiah the prophet Jeremiah chapter number three verse one through thirteen amen uh, got a chance to go into that on Sunday and we just wanted to rehearse a uh, bit of that with you on this evening. So get your Bible out and let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1 through 13. It is a pleasure to come into your house, your home, uh, amen, wherever you are today. It's just a pleasure to come and be with you on today, amen. I just love getting into the Word of God and I know you do too, amen, especially if you're sitting here with me on a Tuesday evening. That's right. I'm right here in my office. Amen. And it's something just impressed on me. Hey, pop on, say a word. Amen. I used to come on at least two times a week on Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Amen. But uh, we're here with you this evening. And we just want to share a brief word for somebody who's out there who, who may be caught up in their sins and just don't understand uh, we just need to return to God. God is the solution to every problem, even when you understand and when you do not understand. Amen. God is a solution. What we have to do. Amen. And, and I pray that God will put this in you to hunger and thirst after righteousness or hunger and thirst after God's way of doing things. If you hunger and thirst and seek God out, you will find the mystery that God is the solution to our problems. God is, and I am seeking God. The Bible says that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And one time does not diligently make. Amen is what I always tell people. Amen. We must seek God. It is kingly to seek out a thing. Amen. You will be rewarded if you diligently seek God out. Amen. 
And that's what I'm doing my best to do is to search and seek God out and let God answer every problem in my life. And I thank God that he's merciful and a forgiving God. And I just want to talk to you about return to God. This scripture is so interesting to me. I couldn't wait to come over and bring it into your audience. And I want you to listen intently. You're seeking God. I said, seek God. I know you want to know what's the answer. Should I get a divorce or not? Should I go for the promotion or not? What should I do about my medical problem? But if we seek God out and desire a intimate relationship with him, the answer that we seek will be found in him. Amen. Amen. And sometimes it takes us a little while to, to, to figure that out. Why grandma and grandpa and them used to go to church all the time uh, when there were other things we thought that were more pressing than church. I, I mean, as a young people and as a young generation, what we did was move away from God. We took ourselves out of God's presence and look at the situation that we are in right now. Look at what's all going on because we were so smart that grandma and grandpa didn't have an answer. It wasn't in church. But what we have found out now, I, I found out, and I don't know about you, but I found that our solution is in God. That's right. Our solution is in the Lord. Let's go right over to our text. I know you don't have much time tonight. So let's roll right over there and take a look at Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1 through 13. But we're talking about return to God. It's going to be interesting. All right, there we are. This is the scripture, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1 through 13, King James Version of the Bible. Let's just roll through it right quickly in one reading, and then let's go back and pause a bit here or there. Are you ready to read it? Let's get ready to read together. As I read, you do your best to listen or to keep up. All right. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lain with. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have withholden, and there hath been no latter rain. And thou hast a whore's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me? My father, thou art the guide of my youth. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldest. The Lord said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not returned unto me with her whole heart, but fendily, saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, the backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and south, 
Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither, 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 shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Let's just stop right there and let's just go back and look at this text. Uh, when we start at the beginning of this text, amen, we find here some very interesting things in the text. We find some very interesting things there in verse number one. Number one, this is talking about Israel and how Israel has backslidden on God. Uh, what has Israel done? Israel uh, has uh, been brought out of Egypt by a mighty hand. Uh, they've been brought out. they prospering. They've given them some land. And Israel turns right around and does, does not really acknowledge God as their king, but wants God to give them a human king. God has been providing for them all of this time, like many of us. God has been providing in our lives but we fail to acknowledge God and make God the king of our lives. We want to do like everybody else around us and follow the world's practices. Israel has found itself in a bad way, in a bad shape. And uh, in this particular text, it just tells us that they, they he compares them to a whore. Okay. In verse number one, we see in our text, that they, it says that Israel, they say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? If a man divorced his wife and then she went off and left and became another man's woman or lay with another man, he said, shall, shall he return unto her again? Shall that man go to his wife again? And you know, they're expecting us to say no, no. And he goes in to say, shall not that land be greatly polluted? Isn't that a, a big problem uh, that the, another man's had his woman and then you want to go back to her? And he said, but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. He's talking about Israel. You, 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 you went out and you've done things and put other people in God's place, many different things you put in God's place. But God says, yet return again to me. That's what we're talking about today at the bottom of the screen. You see our text return to God as bad as Israel was like a man, like a man who puts away his wife, divorces his wife. She goes to be a, another man's woman. And then he says, shall that man return to her? And the expectation in this text is that we would say, no, because she's been polluted or she's laid with another man. Surely you don't want her. She's, she's, I mean, you know, you know, she's, She's been used already by somebody else. You don't want to go back and get her. But but he says, uh, the land will be, uh, she'll be greatly polluted. But thou hast played the heart of men love. Yet, God says this, return again to me, saith the Lord. This is the thing that I'm trying to get over to you as uh, bad as it seems, as bad as you have uh, left the church, you've left God, you went out, You've done things that's against God's way of doing things, but yet and still God is saying there's a way 
to return to him. Uh, there's other scriptures in the Bible that talk about that God is not interested in, in people dying. He's not interested in killing people because he finds them in their sin. What he wants to do is wherever you are, whatever you're doing, turn back to God. Acknowledge that we've messed up, that we've sinned and come short. Acknowledge that, confess that, and God is faithful to forgive us. Look at what he compares it to as a man divorces his wife, wife go out to be another man's woman. And then he says, shall that man return to that woman? And, and he says that ground is greatly polluted. Yet God says, return again to me. By verse two, he says, lift up thine eyes into the high places. See where thou has been lain with in the ways thou hast, uh, thou sat for them. You, you, all these other gods you were, look at how you did for them. Look how you paid attention to them. Look at what you did for them. He said, in the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. Thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Now, verse number three is a very interesting text. Amen. It makes you want to tell other people about the Lord and what he's saying. He says, therefore, the showers have been withholding. He tells them why uh, that they're going through some of the things they're going through. It's because of our waywardness, our turning our backs on God. He's held back uh, the showers. He's held back uh, some of the things that we uh, have need of. He's holding them back because of the way we are doing God. And sin does create a problem in our lives. It blocks our access. It clogs up our access when it comes to uh, certain things pertaining to the spirit of God and the, the God kind of way of doing things. It hinders us. Sin, we do it to ourselves. It hinders us. He said, therefore, the showers have been withholding and there has been no latter rain. Why? Because of the way we are doing God. But I want to talk to you about return to God. Here's the interesting part of this verse. And I'm going to stop here because I told you it's just going to be short. But look at what it says. And thou hast a whore's forehead. A whore's forehead. I've never seen such a thing in scripture in all my days. You have a whore's forehead. Now, right behind that, there's a comma. And it gives us an idea of what this whore's forehead means. It says, thou refuses to be ashamed. To have a whore's forehead means that we are so uh, uh, not ashamed of our sin. We've been emboldened in our sin. We brag about the stuff that we do that's not right. We brag about how much stuff we stole. We brag about how we uh, 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 slept with the other man's wife, and then we slept with that man's wife, this man's wife, and we pull our collar like we're all that and a bag of chips because of the wrong that we've done. Or we're a woman that slept with the other woman's husband and I had him and I had him and I had him and I can get any man I want. You've got him bold and you refuse to be ashamed of things that are not uh, uh, in the appropriate manner that they should be. And, and that's what it means to have a whore's forehead. You become proud in your sin. You become emboldened in your sin. You have a whore's forehead. Not ashamed, wearing the skirt all the way up to your behind cheeks and bragging about it, showing it off, walking proud, got the big heels on, showing everybody that you're loose and unkept. <laughs> you look married and still got another man on your arm, all out in the public and daring anybody to say anything to you. You, you, you've been emboldened. You've got a whore's forehead. <laughs> Lord, I, mean, I never never knew that was a such thing, but there it is right there in the King James version of the text. You've got a whore's forehead. You refuse to be ashamed. And, and, and that's not the way to be with God. You surely do not want to be like this. Amen. You want to repair your relationship with God. And up in verse number one, he told you, even though that you've lain around, you've served other gods, you've given your attention to other things other than God, God is still saying, look, 
Look, return again to me, saith the Lord. Return again to me. Oh, Israel, you done messed up, but I'm waiting. Israel messed up. Judah messed up. Amen. Amen. He says, now Judah, you saw what Israel did, and then you saw how Israel went out and had other gods before me. You watched that, how Israel didn't come back. Then you went off and did the same thing that Israel did. And then when you went off and did it, you got more stubborn than Israel. Israel started to work their way back to God, and God uh, was going to receive them back, but he wanted Judah to also follow suit and come back to him. God desires a relationship with him. Then God says, all you have to do is, is acknowledge, acknowledge. Wait, you don't hear me yet. Acknowledge your sin. That's what it says. Is I just need for you to acknowledge. I need you to acknowledge that you messed up, that you've been in iniquity, that you've transgressed against me. When you do that, I need you to do that. I need you to confess that sin. I need you to say, I messed up, Lord, and I'm godless sorry. I turned from my way of doing things and I turn back to you. And God is willing to accept us back. Amen. When we are godless, sorry, repentant, we turn. Uh, we don't turn 180 degrees because if 180 degrees don't get you heading in God's direction, you need to keep on turning until you start to do things not your way, not your friend's way, but start doing things God's way. That's the way. We have to do things. And when we turn back to God, God is waiting right there to receive us, to accept us, and to restore us to proper relationship with him. I mean, how bad can you get? In 51st number of Psalms, we found out David had slept with another man's wife, got her pregnant, set the man up, had him killed on the front line, Uriah. And there was David in the 51st number of Psalms seeking a relationship with God. He wanted to be in relationship with God. So much so, he said to God, create in me a clean heart. And he was at the right spot. God, I want that relationship repaired. I know I messed up, I've done wrong, but Lord, I desire to be with you. Nathan, I remember he told David uh, in scripture over there, he says, David, you've been with Bathsheba. She's pregnant. And you know, there's consequences to our sin. You know, we shouldn't be surprised that we have to pay. The Bible says, so as a man soweth, so shall he reap. So when we reap from our sins, when we, when we receive, amen, from what we planted, when we receive from what we planted, don't be surprised. Get ready to go through whatever the consequences call for and then come on out of it with a repaired relationship with God. God is able to repair. Nathan told David, the baby going to die, but you shall live. This is the consequences of your sin. You done wrong. I know you love and love, want the baby so bad, but the baby is going to die. You're praying, God, let him, God, nope, the, the baby going to die, but you going to live. And when the baby died, look at what David does. He gets up off the floor. He quits grieving, cleans himself up and marches right on into a better relationship with God. God is not uh, waiting to jump from behind the bush and catch you in your sin. God desires us to turn around and return to him. God is interested in us living and not dying. He says, choose this day, life. Yeah, choose life. Don't choose to die, choose life. So I'm here talking to you, the one who's commit, who's thinking about committing suicide, who's thinking about going out and shooting up some place or shooting up some avenue. I'm, I'm talking to you because all you have to do is turn. He's right there waiting. The Bible says that in the time of trouble, God is nigh thee. All we have to do in our time and our dilemmas is turn to God. And, you know, David said, you know, purge me with hyssop. And I'm pretty sure, just like us, we don't know how detergent takes the dirt out of clothes, but we know to use it. 
Amen. So whatever God has called for, and David didn't think of that. That was already in the word of God, the use of hyssop. And, and so just like that, just like we put clothes in the machine and put washing powder in, and we put them in that water and they come out white as snow. David said, I slept with another man's wife, got her pregnant, had the man killed on the front line, that God was able to create in him a clean heart that he could come out as white as snow. And I'm here to tell you, if he can do it for David, he can do it for us. If he can do it for Abraham, he can do it for us. If he can do it for Moses, he can do it for us. If he can do it for Rahab, he can do it for us. If he can do it for denying Peter, he can do it for us. <laughs> That's what I wanted to tell you tonight. I wanted to tell you to return to God. God is sitting right there waiting. No, all have sinned and come short. Everybody done messed up. Quit holding yourself back out of church. Tell me, I, they won't accept me because I've been to jail. I got a record. What did David have? What did David have? But don't develop a whore's forehead. Don't come running in the church bragging about what you've done and think you can come in the church drunk and have your way. Baby, you got to get rid of the liquor, baby. We can't let you just slob and slander all over the church drunk. We have to allow you to return to God. You can't come in and control us. It ain't any old kind of way. It's God's way. I love it. I love it. I love it. He said, God says, I'm married to the backslider. Israel. It reminds us of Homer, uh, Jose and Goma. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. God desires us to return to him and repair. He's going to repair our right standing with him. May God bless you tonight. I've enjoyed every bit of what we went through. And I want to invite you again, come and join us at Second St. John Missionary Baptist Church, located at 305 Ingram Boulevard, right here in West Memphis, Arkansas. The phone number is on the screen, 870-735-6300. Don't go out and do the wrong thing. Return unto God. Don't worry. If David can do it, you can too. If Israel can do it, we can too. No matter what the problem, God is our solution. May God bless you and God keep you. We are family. We are family. And remember this, just do it how God's way. This has been Pastor Stephen Chipman. We love you and ain't a thing you can do about it.